Okay, this is Dr. Morton um, doing recording the uh, the lab for Monday, the 9th of November. Pretty amazing. Second week in November. Hard to believe. Well, anyway, um, so uh, what we're going to do today, we're going to we're going to review for the uh, second written test, which is coming up on Friday. So I do have the test written now. I might change a I might change a question or two, but at this point, it's it is written. So I'm going to go over what I'm going to ask you. So it's going to be worth your while to pay attention to this video. Now, the, the, the it has 25 questions, so it's it's a fairly short test. And, um, you know, I'll probably grade it fairly easily, so I don't want you to sweat over it. But I would like you to spend some time because, you, you know, it, the tests are probably going to make a difference between, you know, the A's and B's, basically. It's kind of what it comes down to. As long as you've done... The project and all the labs. So if you've done the project, the labs, well, and the homework. So if you've done the project, the labs, and the homework, then probably the worst you're going to do is get a B in the course. Um, and if you did well on the test, you'll get an A. That's kind of what it comes down to. Um, if you didn't do some of those other things, then it could knock you down to a C. So it's a matter of doing the work for this course. We're rapidly coming up to the last date that you can turn in and made, uh, make up labs. Now, if you haven't done all your labs, if you're missing two labs, or you don't do your final project, then um, then that's 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 going to cause an incomplete. So hopefully nobody's going to be in that boat because it it's a problem. And then I have all these students with incompletes, and they don't do anything about them. And then a year later, they're trying to make them up at the last minute. And guess what? It's hard to do an entire course worth of course worth of work. In a, you know, in a few weeks at the end of the semester before your year runs up and your incomplete turns into an F. Now, I have a, I have a student that's in exactly that boat right now. And I don't, I don't know, I, you know, they wanted to know what they had to do, and I told them. It was basically every lab, all the homework, and the final exam. So, I don't know. Whatever. Don't put yourself in that position. Because it's, it's really, it's avoidable. This is... And, you know, this is a shooting yourself in the foot kind of thing. It's an unforced error. Okay. Um, all right. So here's the syllabus. So we're reviewing for the written, and the written test is test two, covers chapters four through eight. Uh, and actually, you can throw in there uh, nine and, you know, all, everything we covered. I'm, there may be a little bit in chapter nine. I can't remember. All right. And then after that, uh, we'll just... Uh, have a few topics. I probably won't do a lot of, I may not do a lot more lectures actually because we've, I think we've already covered 10. I might, I might, I'll, I'll look at these uh, 11 A, B, C, and D and see if there's anything in there that really needs to be discussed. And, and we may just, uh, we may just take those class days off and let you focus on other courses and get your project done. Uh, we will have a final exam. I'll probably try and, I'm probably going to try and do that early so we get the semester done. Uh, so I might even do that uh, right after Thanksgiving, um, and I'll, I'll talk. I, I may well. I'll use some of these la some of these class times. I'll probably do review for the final exam. That's really what I'll probably do. I'll I, I'll have to review these and to see if any of them are really important. I, I'll probably cover them. And some of them uh, I don't even know if there is an 11D. But anyway, okay. That having been said, let's uh, let's get rid of that. And so I, here's what I want to show you. So I'm gonna I'm gonna this file is going to be available uh, on Blackboard. I'll, I'll make it available today, um, and uh, and so then you can start looking this over for the test on Friday. So what this represents is two very log codes for a uh, carry look ahead adder. So this is the carry look ahead adder, and they're very different. This one implements it by 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 instant instantiating a bunch of full adders, and then uh, and then it also does these uh, these uh, generates, propagates, and carry terms. Now, um, and it's but it's and it's a uh, and it's a four bit carry look ahead adder. It generates it takes in a, a, a four bits of add one, four bits of add two, and it generates a five bit result. There is no carry in. So that's that's how it works and and if you go through and look at these uh, instantiations so it creates these wires 
uh, there's a 4-bit wire called W underscore C. I, I don't know why all these stupid things are just, they're just, I don't know how you get rid of this stuff. It's really quite irritating. I guess you just have to click on every single one of them. Let me pause it and get rid of them. Okay, I got them turned off, fortunately. Uh, let's see, and, but I made my thing too big. Okay, good. All right, so so there's so here's the here's the document, and I'm gonna turn this off for this document. This, so hopefully you won't see all that stuff too. It, it shows up because it's a program, which is a bit of a pain. Okay, so there are two versions of the carry look ahead at adder in this document. Okay, there's the first page, which is ver version A, and there's the second page, which is listing B. Now in this listing, I actually numbered all the all the code lines. There are a bunch of comment lines, and there, there's a bunch of comments added in. And some of the comments wrap around, so don't let that free like this comment wrapped around. So ignore that. All the numbered lines, only the numbered lines are lines that actually have code. Um, and I was going to refer to these lines by number, but it turned out I didn't really need to do that. Um, so I don't know. I guess I might take the numbers out before I post it, but right now that, that's how it looks. So this is listing B, and this is listing A. And I'm going to ask you questions. They are they are different, and and you, you should look through them. So the first thing I would encourage you to do this week before Friday, or you can do it on Friday if you want, because you'll have all day to take the test, and, and I'm going to make this available now. Give this a look over, and I want you to think through it. I want you to try and understand how this works. Uh, I will talk a little bit about carry propagate carry look the carry prop the carry look ahead adder but basically the whole idea of carry look ahead is uh, it has to do with generating these lines right here so we we generate so there's two different things that we that we do with a carry look ahead adder uh, one of the things that we do is we uh, and and the whole idea is to try and try and um, calculate the carries out so so here we have all the all the we have the four one two three all four bits of the adder right zero one two three so here are our here are our four adders right here and and what we what we do in a carry ripple adder is we 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 calculate all these things but the the high order bits don't have the advantage of knowing what the carry in really is until this this the low order bit has completed and then once it's completed then the carry out is good which then means this one can come complete and once this one completes then the second carry out is good which then means the th bit two can complete which is the third bit and then once that carry out's good the the high order bit bit three can complete so so for four bits it's not a big deal but if you have 32 bits or 64 bits uh, this one can't complete until all the other adders are done and they all have to wait on the previous adder which adds a really significant amount of delay to the result. So the whole idea for a carry look ahead adder is to go ahead and generate the carry for bit 3 uh, immediately. That's the idea. And the way you do that is you generate a, a, carry, uh, a, a carry generate and a carry propagate bits for each of these, uh, for each of these uh, uh, sums, and here and here's how they generate. You look at the two add ends, <clears throat> and if uh, and if so, the generate for bit zero, if if both of the add ends are ones, you're going to generate a carry bit. Okay, and then the propagate bit, if either one of the add ends is one then if you get a carry in, you're going to propagate it to be a carry out. So armed with the generates for all four bits and the propagates for all four bits in this case, obviously if you had a 8 bits or 16 bits, you'd have more. If, if you do that, then you can predict the carry. Then you can use these to, to predict the carry for, for this. What it really... <clears throat> so, so, and a good way to see that this is what ha this is what it takes. So the first carry out 
uh, well, the uh, the carry in for the bit zero is is carry zero. Well, we don't have a carry in for that bit. Okay, uh, so so the carry the carry in for for bit one um, then is propagate is the generate zero or with the combination of propagate anded with the carry in. Now in this case there the carry in is going to be zero. Um, at least in this in this code the carry in is uh, well the carry in does exist here in this code up in this code down here in the B code um, there there actually I don't think there was a well there is a carry in. Yeah okay I take it back. So this one doesn't have a carry in. Yeah this one doesn't have a carry in which is kind of interesting. Um, okay so um, but yeah, but the but the B code does have a carry in, uh, so I take that back. All right. So anyway, up here, what you see, uh, this is how the carries are generated, um, and uh, so then we have uh, so you you know there's going to be a carry if the generate is is true, or if the propagates true and there's a carry in. Okay, so that's how you know there's going to be a carry, and then and that way you can go ahead and assign the value to the carry carry three, which we use in the sum here for this this adder. Uh, we uh, yeah, so these are the these are the full adders. So we we put in the uh, the add n one add n two and the uh, carry in and we generate a sum and a carry out now in this in this code they they don't have a carry out right they have a four they have a, a five bit sum which takes the four bits of carry in uh, sorry the four sum bits and then adds in the carry out as the higher order bit and and you can see that happens right here okay you have the you have the four bits of sum concatenated with the the carry out four, which is the carry out of the whole thing, and that gives you a a, a five bit sum. They call it here assign out result, and that's what's out up here, and it's five bits. Okay, um, all right. So so I just want you to look over these and and study them, and I want you to ask yourself how. You know how how do we avoid waiting for the carries to be calculated uh, in both of these routines? Now here, uh, what you see is the carry zero just equals the carry in. Um, but obviously, you could have just written carry in as 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 C zero. So anyway, that's why they say that line's not needed because it can be directly written. But anyway, that's how they did it. Um, you could just use the carry zero as the carry in. Anyway, um, and then then we assign uh, the and here the sum the, the nomenclature is different. Our sum is y, and a carry out in our inputs are a, b, and carry in. And again, four bits, four bits of uh, y plus a carry out. Now in this case, they didn't concatenate that into a five bit result. They uh, they have the carry out as a separate bit and the four bits of sum instead of like we did up here uh, doing this O result is the concatenation of the sum plus the carry bit at the carry out bit okay so anyway so the A and B of course are four bits just like above and then there's a carry in uh, so the inputs are A and B, four bits of each, and a carry in. The outputs are, in this case, four bits of sum, which is called Y, and a carry out. Whereas up here we have we have uh, no carry in, and we have an output of uh, four bits of uh, five bits of sum plus the carry out appended, concatenated. All right. Um, so you can see uh, we have these internal signals, the generate and the propagate. And the and these are there are four there are four of those and then five carries, uh, 
and they they just added an extra one for coding simplicity and you can kind of see they so they assign c zeros carry in which again they said they didn't really need okay so the first bit is just uh the, the sum bit for the first add operation is a exclusive ard with b exclusive ard with c for the carry in um now the below line, single line is what reduces the delay now you can make the carry in one is made up of this which basically is the generate and propagate okay and they just wrote it they just wrote it differently and then here's the sum for for the next bit y1 so we did y0 here now we have y1 we have a1 exclusive r with b1 exclusive r with c1 now normally you'd have to wait on c1 but now we're generating c1 directly with this equation and notice here c0 is just the carry in so there's no delay on generating c0 now what you see here now when we generate c2 note no this is this this is this is not one of the lines of code right this is an example this is what we're doing we're we're basically taking the generate uh and the propagate uh, and we're doing that with C1. Well, uh, so we would normally have to wait on C1, but the actual line of code is here, line 12. And if you notice, this is this takes this takes uh, the actual equation for generating C1 and includes it here. So we're so this is uh, I think it's I think we're So, so this basically goes all the way to C0, all right? And notice this C2 then is a much bigger equation, but it's still two layers. So it has more gates, but it's only two layers. Whereas for C1, it's, it's a, you can see it's a smaller lot, it's, a, it's a fewer terms, but still just two, two levels, all right? And then C3, same thing. You could write C3 dependent on C2, but what you really want is line 14 here where we have an even longer line and again it's just two layers so we're generating c3 at the same speed that we're generating uh y3 so it does have to it does have to wait for this two layer thing and then it can generate so see the dependency on C3 is it's a two-layer result. Um, but so you do have to wait for this two-layer result and then and then this will be good. But what you don't have to wait for is uh, the first bit, the second, the zero bit, the one bit, the two bit, all to com all to complete and pass their carry along. You just have to wait for uh, for for two levels. So essentially the delay the propagation delay of two gates to get the result for carry three not the prop not the propagation delay of two gates and then two more gates and then two more gates or six gates so so i want you to look through these and make sure you understand what's going on and i want you to go up here and look at this one and make sure you understand what's going on with this one and i want you to begin to sort of catalog what you think are the differences okay how are these how are these two sets of code different and uh, yeah okay um, so so I think that's good so then what I'm gonna do I'm gonna I'm gonna make the uh, I'll, I'll put this away I haven't posted it yet but I will uh, I'll put it up on the web and you'll be able to see it uh, what I think I'll do though is I'm gonna pull up Let's see. Uh, I don't want to. Let me. Yeah, good. OK. Yeah, you can't see this. That's good. OK, so now what I thought I'd do would be just to uh, just to go ahead and, and talk about some of the other questions. Uh, so. Um, so I, I so I, so I'm just going to catalog the things I want you to 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 know for the test and then. 
on Wednesday, I guess I'll talk about them in a little more detail. All right. Um, okay, so so the first 10 questions, or 10 of the questions, are going to be um, on the... Uh, uh, maybe I'll do them in order this time. But but uh, the questions will be on, on the, the carry look ahead adder. So 10 of the questions will be on the carry look ahead adder, and, and you'll need to refer to that data sheet for those questions. Um, although maybe some of them you, you can answer even without looking at the, at, at the program listings for those two programs, A and B. But uh, then, then I'm going to ask a number of other questions. So I'm going to talk about uh, going to talk about nets and registers. We went over that in one of the recent lectures. So you should definitely know a little bit about nets and registers. And I'll review this on, on Wednesday. Um, you should know how, when a register can be used and when a net can be used, both in module listings and in, uh, and in equations. So obviously in a process block, uh, you know that the left-hand side has to be a register. Um, and in a uh, in a uh, conditional assignment, uh, in a yeah, in a con in a in an assignment statement, you have to know that the left hand side has to be a wire um, or a net. Um, I I'm not going to pimp you on on all sorts of subtle types of nets, but you should go back and review that lecture, uh, or you can review that uh, uh, those powerpoints. All right, um, so. You should know uh, that uh, you should know something about uh, carry carry chains and cascade chains in logic blocks. Why we add? So we have our normal logic block is going to be uh, a let let six, um, and I guess it's two let sixes, uh, a couple of flip flops, and some multiplexers to direct things around. But there also are carry chains and cascade chains, and all all that is there is a there's basically an additional uh, 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 AND gate or OR gate depending uh, that can take inputs from the outside and can take inputs from inside the logic block. And what that allows you to do it allows you to 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 chain these things together. So if you're dealing with a whole bunch of bits. You can uh, it it is a lot more efficient to do it that way, so you should definitely go back and review uh, the carry chains and cask and uh, cascade chains. Uh, you should go back and review the 754 standard a little bit. I I, I think I did have one question about that. Uh, you should at least know, um, you know, how, basically how many bits in in the different fields. One for for floats for uh, single precision. Uh, one sign bit, um, eight bits of exponent, and then 23 bits of mantissa. Now, really, are significant. Now, really, we there actually are 24 bits of significant. But remember, one of those bits is not stored. Uh, we always assume there's a one, so that's why we do this normalized uh, form. And you should also remember that we we do have an offset to the uh, to the uh, uh, exponent so that uh, so that the exponent gets 128 added to it or 100 yeah 127 I guess um, and so we have that we have that that offset that's uh, factored into the exponent and the reason for that is we don't use two's complement because you can't sort two's complement um, without without special routines whereas the floating point numbers as stored can be sorted in numerical order. Um, and that's about all you need to know. You should go back and review the fact that we have some new uh, formats that were just assigned last year. And, um, and But I'm, I'm probably not going to ask those anyway. But you should review that. Um, you should know, you should go back and review uh, functions. Um, and you should remember one of the big uses of functions is in 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 uh, procedural blocks, where you have uh, procedural blocks, m multiple procedural blocks that need uh, uh, the same code basically in them. That's where function blocks can be very useful. Remember, you cannot put you cannot call a module inside an always block or an initial block. Um, 
So uh, you should remember that that um, a function uh, doesn't have can it can have any procedural delays, no no propagation delays, no no uh, inertial delays, no transport delays, and no no procedural delays. Um, you should know you should know a little bit about tasks. Um, you should know that a task can have delays, um, but um, and you should know that a task can be synthesized, and obviously functions can be synthesized too. But but a lot of times tasks are used uh, in test benches, and functions can be used in test benches too. They just can't include any delays. Remember, in Verilog we have four value logic. It's the it's the uh, uninitialized or unknown. We represent that with an X. The disconnected, which generally refers to nets, not registers. Registers can never be disconnected because they always are outputting something. We may not know what it is. In that case, we give it an X. So they may never have been initialized, in which case we give it an X. Uh, a wire, however, can be, can be disconnected or not driven. And then it gets a Z. And then obviously we have 0 and 1 as the two possible uh, logic values. Um, so that's, those are our four, uh, four valued logic system. Um, you, should, you should go back and make sure you know uh, how a def parm statement is used um, and how it's, how it's put together. And you should definitely remember uh, how named association and is implemented and how positional association is implemented. Um, you should remember a little bit of where we studied on the uh, on the uh, on our uh, our classic combinational fault model with the uh, stuck at zero and stuck at one designations, and um, and you should know that uh, uh, when we tested state machines that uh, where we don't have access to our state variable uh, that we have to use a distinguishing sequence then to verify if we actually went to the right state with a given set of inputs. And then what we do is we, we drive it to the state that we're testing, and then to see if that it was in fact that state, we put in the then we give it the distinguishing sequence, and that tells us if in fact it was that state, because the outputs are characteristic and different for every state. Okay, um, well, gosh, I think that's uh, that's mostly what I wanted to sort of highlight, and then like I say on on Wednesday, I think I'll just go I'll just do a quick review of uh, some of the highlights of the things we covered. Um, so let's see. And, and again, that what, we'll, what we'll be looking at, we'll be looking at, uh, oh, I think I took that away. Uh, let's see if I can get, put that back up briefly. Yeah. Yeah, so the syllabus is just here. And Okay, so um, yeah, chapters four through eight. The other thing is, uh, so I, I, you, I, I can't remember if I, I think I did specify. No, I guess I never really put it in the syllabus, so that's fine. So, so all of your uh, all of your labs must be made up by the twenty fifth. That's the last date. So if you don't have your labs made up by then, you're in trouble. So. Make sure you, you have all your labs made up by the 25th. And that, that'll be the Wednesday before Thanksgiving. So I'll, I'll give you till then, but that's it. After that, no labs will be accepted. If you're missing more than one, you can miss one. It'll cost you, but you can miss one. If you're missing two labs, you're going to then incomplete. And then um, for the project, um, let's put that back up. So for the project, I didn't really put... But probably what I'll do for the project, you'll have to have the project turned in uh, before the uh, on or before the second of December. So last day to make up any labs, twenty fifth of November, project due. And now maybe I'll just add that to the syllabus and post that. And then I've, um, yeah, and I'll say project due. Yeah, and I don't think I actually, yeah. So hopefully everybody is uh, working on their final project, at least thinking about it and planning. And you should be working on it because you should have your labs done. 
But if you don't have your labs done, then get those done as quickly as you can, and then get started on your final project. The, the options are on Blackboard, um, and I pointed that out before. Maybe I should show that real quickly. Let's see. Um, yeah, here we go. We'll, we'll do this. Um, we'll do, get a blackboard. And let's see if we can bring it right up. No. Uh, no, I pulled, punched the wrong one. Shoot. Well, never do it again. Okay, if you scroll down here, uh, you'll see uh, project proposal, project options. So these are your project options here. And... Uh, So option one is to use a, a VGA display and do Pong or Snake or something. Um, option two then is uh, guess the four hex digit number. Option uh, three is guess the three digit hex number, but the three digit hex number, uh, you have, it scrolls by at slightly slower, slightly slower each time. And, and you, have to, you have to figure out what it is as it shoots by. And uh, in the in the uh, seven segment displays, it starts on one side and kind of scrolls quickly across all uh, all eight displays, and you have to be able to perceive what it is. And then option four is uh, is basically using random patterns on a seven segment display. Uh, just out of curiosity, on a seven segment display, if we don't count the decimal point, how many different uh, patterns? Uh, how many different patterns? Uh, can we actually uh, display? What do you think? On a seven segment display, how many different patterns can you display? Well, the answer is 128, if you count all, 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 all segments off, uh, which is pretty amazing, right? That would be, we could actually display every ASCII letter. Unfortunately, we'd have to have a lot of crazy things memorized to actually be able to read them because they wouldn't look like the letters, right? They would look very different and funny. In fact, you can't really even make the letters all work with a seven-segment display. But you can definitely do A, B, C, D, E, F, and, of course, the numbers 0 through 9. So you, can, so you can represent hex digits really nicely. But once you get past that, it begins to get confusing. Okay, um, well, um, I think that's pretty much uh, what I wanted to cover. So hopefully that gets you started studying uh, and kind of preparing for the test. Again, it's not a big deal, so I don't, you don't have to kill yourself, but you should definitely look at the things I mentioned. And then I'll do some more review on Wednesday, and then we'll have the test on Friday. And then that'll pretty much wrap it up. Uh, I may uh, Most of the remaining of the course, I'll do lectures and whatnot and give you time to work on your final project and get all your labs done. Um, so I am going into lab uh, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and for the micro guys on Friday. So if you come in, we'll, we'll give you help. Um, uh, Alex is there and, and uh, some of the other students. Uh, so come in and get help uh, if you need it. Don't sit at home and fail to get the labs done and then try and figure out what you're going to do because you're going to be you're going to be dealing with an incomplete and you won't be able to make it up until sometime in January at the soonest. Um, so make sure you make sure you do that. Um, and if you don't want an incomplete, then you just get an F. So the incomplete is a is a generous offer because if you don't if you miss two labs, you you basically earn an F in the course. So the incomplete gives you a chance to fix that, and you don't ever have to you don't have to pay tuition again. You just have to make up the missing labs, and then you'll get a regular grade like you would have gotten. So I, I think it's a very good deal, but it's a better deal if you just do the work and get it all done. All right. So um, enough for the pep talk. We will. Uh, I'll, I'll have another lecture on uh, Wednesday, and if I if you come into lab, I will see you then.